Welcome back. In the previous two or three videos, we looked at how to generate an alcohol given a compound with a double bond or how to generate a diol, that is two hydroxy groups that are placed on two adjacent carbons uh, from a compound containing a double bond, right? And in the process, we looked at how we can generate a Markovnikov's product or anti-Markovnikov's product, right? In the last of the video for this week, we are going to learn how to generate a ketone, okay, from a double bond. Now, if you remember earlier when I walked you through what a ketone would look like, okay, if a carbon containing, this is a carbonyl group, okay? Now, both of these groups could be attached to anything but hydrogen, okay? And I've gave you an example of acetone, okay? This is a ketone. Acetone is the actual name of the compound, right? This is the carbonyl group right here, right? So this is a ketone. And how can we generate a ketone from a compound containing a double bond? Now, it's very important that you understand the difference between the position of where the double bond is, right? Let's say we have this compound, okay? Now keep in mind, I will also show you how you can use this for aldehyde, all right? But for now, let's just say, say this is, okay? I mean, you shouldn't be unfamiliar with this because we have learned how to write isomers. And so say this is the compound containing, and this is the double bond between these two carbons, okay? And when it reacts with, Okay, O3, which is ozone. Okay, this old reaction is also known as ozonolysis. And this reacts with dichloromethane, which is DCM. And in addition, it reacts with zinc and acetic acid. Okay, this is all you need. And then water, of course. When you put all these together, you will generate this. Okay, if the double bond is part of a straight chain, then you would generate two separate ketones. What happens here is this double bond breaks and you add an, a carbonyl group to this carbon. Well, you're not adding carbonyl group, you're just adding oxygen because the carbon's already there. And then you add another carbonyl group to the other side. Okay, now this is a ketone, right? When the double bond is in a straight chain, you essentially end up splitting the compound in two halves, okay? Generating two separate compounds, right? Whereas, what if you have this? Let's say your double bond is not part of a straight chain, but instead it is part of a ring then you don't actually end up generating two separate compounds, but instead you just end up opening up the ring. And then I'm not gonna write all this reaction reagents again, the same thing. I'm just gonna say do here, means everything that's on the top is also on the bottom. Okay, if you react that, what you end up doing here is, you write everything the same way that you start with, but the only difference here is you don't actually generate two separate products, but instead the double bond O gets added to the carbon containing the double bond. I mean, remember, this is where the, the double bond was. This is not same as this, okay? What I mean by not same as this is you're not actually generating two separate products, you're, you have simply broken the chain. And so this is one large product, okay? So now let's look at the actual mechanism on how this would work, okay? So as I said, so let's say we have the same reactant that I had written earlier. Okay, so if this was, 
say your compound containing the double bond. Okay. That's what I had. And then whenever it reacts with ozone, I'm not going to write the remainder of the reagents. Not, I can write them as I go, but this is ozone, O3. Okay. And this broad set of reactions are known as ozonolysis. Okay. Because you're using ozone. It's called ozonolysis. Okay. Just like how you add an epoxide, whenever you react a compound containing a double bond with O3, which is called ozone, okay? I'm not writing the other reagents just for clarity, but you should assume that I've, they've been used, okay? What happens here is you make this complex looking intermediate. Everything is the same, but I'll write the actual name of this intermediate. Okay. I can test you what the intermediate would look like on a test. Okay. So this is called a ozonoid. Okay. Ozonoid. Okay. This is an intermediate. It looks very complex, right? Basically, everything is the same except you just have this little cyclopentane type of a ring where you contain three oxygen. Basically, those three oxygens have come from your ozone, okay? This is ozone, okay? So ozonolysis, and this then leads to the actual product, which is you end up, what you end up doing here is, okay? Remember, you are going to make, you know, a double bond, right? So your, this oxygen would end up carried away into the side products, but one of the oxygen goes with the carbon, the other goes with the carbon. And as I said, you write everything the same, but you end up actually producing two separate carbonyl compounds, okay? Or two separate ketones, okay? Well, if your goal is to produce acetone, this would be a fantastic opportunity to create ketones, right? Now, again, I want to ref refresh your memory that if the double bond is part of a straight chain, that it, it is not part of a ring, then you end up generating two separate compounds. That is essentially you add a double bond out of this carbon, a double bond out of this carbon, right? Whereas if you have like the other reaction I showed you, the double bond is not actually part of the part of a straight chain, but instead if it is part of a ring, like I showed you in the other example, it still reacts with ozone, okay, and the reminder of them, which is dichloromethane, and then zinc, and acetic acid, and water. I'm just writing all the reagents. This is how you can expect an organic reaction to be written on a test is they give you the reactant and all the reagents that you need to complete the reaction and then you, you expect to write the product, right? So as I said, since we're still using ozone, we're still performing an ozonolysis, okay? We're still performing a ozonolysis. That means you will expect a ozonoid intermediate, okay? So if you see me write something within a square bracket, that means it is more likely an intermediate in a reaction. That's not the final product, right? Okay, so let's write. Okay. Because you know, when you're when you're ozonol when, when you make your ozonoid, you no longer have that bond between the CH3, okay, the carbons containing the CH3s. So that means you will have something like this. Right? This is your intermediate. And again, as I said, this breaks and this breaks, right? So it leads to your product. But key factor here is that when the double bond is inside a ring or is it inside or part of a ring, then you don't actually end up generating two separate products, but you generate one single product, okay? But this is your ozonoid, okay? And this is your actual product. 
Okay. So this is one way, or you can also use an alternate reagent called um, hydrogen periodate, okay, or hydrogen, yeah, hydrogen periodate would be perfect. So say you get this compound, okay, you can achieve this, you can achieve a similar product with this reagent as you did with your ozonolysis. So you would end up with the same product, uh, whether it's a, if you, if you have the double bond part of ring, then you will have what you had earlier. Okay. You generate the exact same product, just a different reagent. All right. Or if you say have what you had earlier, then you would generate two separate products with the same HIO4 and pyridine. And so that means you will have CH3, CH2, C double bond O, CH3 plus C, CH3. So when your double bond is part of a straight chain and it is not inside a ring, then you generate two separate products. Whereas when you have, I'm just gonna separate this out. So this is part of, so this is very similar reaction, just for different reagents, okay? So this is part of the ozone. This is part of the hydrogen per iodate reaction. All right, and the very last thing that I do want to tell you before I wrap this week's video series is what happens when you want to reduce something, okay? Now, sodium borohydride, as I said earlier, is an excellent source of hydrogen, right? But what if you have, I mean, whenever you use hydrogen, well, you reduce Say you start a compound such as this, which is a cyclohexene, and then it reacts with hydrogen, okay? And then normally use palladium and carbon, okay? What this is, is this is a catalyst, okay? What's a catalyst? A reagent that speeds up a chemical reaction, right? So whenever you have a double bond and you wanna go to a compound that doesn't contain the double bond, then your best process is called reduction, okay? Reduction is when you add hydrogens to a compound, okay? So if you add hydrogens, then this compound would not have the double bond, but instead, okay, you'll add the hydrogen from, keep in mind, this already has hydrogen, right, two, Right, I'm going to actually write them here. So I can come back and say, these hydrogens were already present in the molecule. It's just you have now gone from an alkene to an alkane. Okay, anytime a compound doesn't contain a double bond, it's an alkane, it contains a double bond, it's an alkene. So the key here is that whenever you wanna reduce a molecule, you use hydrogen molecule, along with a catalyst such as palladium and carbon. Okay, this, this is a catalyst because this reaction would happen much faster if, it, if uh, this was there and if it's not there, the reaction would generally be slow, but normally it's carried out with some kind of catalyst. All right, so you can think of, you can write any pretty much any alkene and it reacts with an hydrogen and palladium and carbon catalyst, it makes an alkene. All right, so let's do maybe one more example. Say, and this reacts with hydrogen and palladium over carbon would generate, basically, I'm gonna write everything and then write the two hydrogens that I've added from the hydrogen in the, rea in the reagent with a different color. So the hydrogen gets added to the carbon containing the double bond, all right? So, I just wanted to introduce you to the idea of reduction since we are on the topic of double bonds and I think it will make perfect sense, right? 
So I'm going to wrap this week's video series with this last piece of information. So stay tuned for more videos in the near future. All right. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.